Welcome back, everyone, to Nanalyze the Dawn. I'm your host, Dominic or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. Got the intro right. All right. Finally, remember what I would normally say. Which just occurs to me, I could just watch earlier videos of mine to double check what it was I used to say. Anyhow, back to the game. We have Dave the Brave on shields up against Masper on rovers fighting over Jurassic Sands, a map which I haven't had the pleasure of showing on stream before. I guess it's not very popular, but here it is. Jurassic Sands, a map which actually, I mean, it's pretty, but there's something about this crater. I'm trying to remember the name. There's another map that is this kind of crater geo thing, and I can't remember what it's called right now. It was very red. Was it Valus Meronaris? It might have been Valus Meronaris. Anyway. So this is a prettier version of Valus Meronaris, apparently. With water. As the name would suggest, but no. Because astronomical naming is weird. Anyway. That is a Southwest Rover Plop. Also, yeah, this is... It is kind of curious now that I think about it. I mean, you can, you can do it. Actually, this map's not so bad. This map's pretty flat. I don't see the issue. Let's double check. What can rovers go on? Okay, they can't go up to the geos. That's the main issue. Everything else is basically fine. Compared to bots, though. Yeah, bots have the peaks of those mountains and not much else. Everything else they can path on. For reference, those of you not familiar, purple means they can't walk on it. Red means it's slow. Anyhow... Back to the match, and Dave the Brave already putting a lot of pressure onto Masper. Masper should be able to get a little bit of damage into the back lines. No defenses have been set up, and the commander is out of position, so this Scorcher actually could take care of a couple a couple melee strikes before the Bandit even gets in, and the Bandit might not be enough to defend. Certainly trying, but I'm not confident of its chances. Oof. No, two Bandits. Okay, that's more than enough, but still... Two middle extractors, two wind generators. Dave the Brave getting way behind an economy where Masper is able to reclaim back off of the damage that was dealt. Banish that to themselves at their own death, and that is... Well, still kind of even. I mean, Dave the Brave, luckily for them, did not lose any conjurers... Or, sorry, any convicts in the process. So the one they had in the main base goes up to expand, adds a bit more to their little empire of metal... Well, Masper is... Well, that's where they started. And actually, I would say the plop is more curious because of the fact that they put the factory in the corner. I've, I talked about this before, but talk about it later, as bandits are currently providing quite a bit of pressure. The score should be able to defend reasonably okay, but that is definitely Dave's the Brave's advantage there in terms of attrition. And Dave the Brave continuing to apply pressure, but yeah, the speaking of pressure... This factory position means that Masper has terrible defender's advantage. Like, they basically don't have defender's advantage just because of how out of position the factory is in the front line. It's one of the things that you have to think about when selecting a start point, is how far forward can you afford to go that you can still defend? Because the farther forward you are, the more territory you kind of implicitly have, and the better your defender's advantage when you get attacked in the front lines. Because right now, Masper basically has about... A 20-ish second, a 10-20 second delay, depending on unit type, between it being built and going to the front lines. So even if they were, for example, to start ramping up production massively, like say they you know, start building up more metal extractors, get some reclaim, throw in a few caretakers, maybe a plate or two, well, it's going to take like almost a minute for that to really matter more than it would have if they were in the front lines. It's like for two or three waves, I mean, maybe 10 seconds for a single wave, but still... But like two or three waves worth of production, it's going to take a lot more time than it ought to. And that's going to leave them open. As we're seeing already, I mean, they're relying entirely on Lotuses and Masons. The factory is right here. A new Scorcher pops out or a Ripper gets swapped in instead. That pops out. Well, there you go. All the bandits dead. But now the bandits can keep just playing havoc with Masper's beachhead. And there's not a whole lot Masper can do about it. Except, I guess, try to defend in the water itself. Of course, all this time, Dave the Brave is just continuing to expand across the map. 
Because again, they plot forward. They have a much easier time defending when everything's come up, and they don't have to worry about the back line stuff so much. Especially with rovers. I mean, especially especially when Masper has all this pressure on them. Yeah, India Ray pointing out that you're sitting behind a pawn and you have to go across that every single time. Which is why I was saying, like 10, 20 seconds, depending on unit type. Actually, it's more like 20 seconds, because I, yeah, I didn't really take into, take into account the river. Still, Scorch is able to come in, get some defenses going. It's iffy, but the reclaim is all in Masper's territory, so they do benefit either way. 500 metal per second, and a couple of workers on that, that, or a couple of constructors on that. That's a minute and a half worth of being even with Dave the Brave. Fortunately for them, Dave the Brave is energy stalling, but Dave the Brave is also aware of energy stalling and dealing with it. So it's not really a huge problem. Still, though, Dave the Brave. No caretakers. That's the bigger problem here. Mass Pro actually is ahead on production, in theory. Needs a couple characters to throw down, which will be the next couple things this convict builds. So, Day of the Rave will be accessing, but not ultimately for too long. Masper, on the other hand, with a... Why is the fusion reactor taking so long? That's main normal priority. Well, fusion reactor is... Okay, it's, it is a thousand metal, but still, that's not that expensive. It's a minute and a half. This should be the most it is. Still, Masper at least able to off that defense to get some actual counterattacks going. Getting through a couple expansions. Putting Day of the Race Commander in an awkward position. Not sure if Masper realizes this or wants to go for it. Honestly, it's probably best not to. Not at this point. I mean, they're close enough that more units can take them out. Like, just be prepared for the commander to potentially come attack your base directly. But otherwise, yeah, there's not a whole lot of defenses around the map. That's... That's the conclusion Masters come to, and that is relatively correct. I mean, if they run into the Felon, they're dead, but everything else, yeah, it's pretty, pretty open season. So Masper actually getting a solid shot at getting back into this game. Grabbing the energy as well off the reclaim. On the help to rebuild it, or build up the fusion reactor, which still taking a bit. Thanks to the caretaker not being on that, but I can see why. I mean... Now, they got enough energy right now. They should worry more about getting their army up as the bandits are assaulting. The commander is indeed coming to the base. Hard push with stingers, but it's working reasonably well. Same time over to the side. Convict goes down over to the northeast. Masper taking advantage of the fact that Day the Brave had gone forward. I did say that most forward you can ex you can reliably defend from. And while it was working out for Dave the Brave thus far, Masper... Taking advantage of the hole in the defenses to wipe out Dave the Brave's economy. Should be able to take out that stinger, no problem. That's gone. Dave the Brave wasting a bunch of metal on that, thanks to the Scorchers. And, of course, all that economy completely wrecked. Dave the Brave going from an economic advantage, like 30 to 24, down to, well, 20 to, you know, depends on reclaim. But their commander, their commander going down, that is going to be huge. Should be able to take care of the last couple ban- No, not quite one bandage left, but that's not going to be enough. More reinforcements have been built up for Masper, and that is going to work out. Well, that is... I mean, Dave the Brave, like I said, it's a question of defense. This wasn't a bad move to build the expansions in the back, but it was kind of a risky move not to build defenses around them. Especially playing shields, as people in chat are pointing out. Wait, when did Masper's Comm die? Oh, Masper's Comm died. My bad, I totally missed that. Well, either way, Masper is still ahead. Considerably, thanks to that earlier rating. Which honestly could still happen. It's, these these Scorches are not dead. Granted, four Lotuses is more than enough to stop them from going into the main base. But still, they're not dead. Day of the Brave can't really expand all that much either. So they're kind of stuck. However, Day of the Brave doesn't care. Like, you know what? Well, I can go through large bodies of water as well with my units. So I'll do exactly that. Because everything here is a is a indeterminate height, somewhere between 5 and 200 feet tall. Honestly, I have no idea how tall the units are supposed to be in this game. The trees are no help. But anyway, the the defenses, however, for Masper are already in place. Ravager's coming up. Looks like pure Ravager. Yeah, Ravager Scorcher. 
Still, Ravagers are enough. I mean, the high health pool means the Felon can't really do much. The Felon drains all the shields trying to kill it, and then after that, everything else comes and takes revenge. Still, though, Masper is fighting from this tiny little corner. They're relying almost entirely on Overdrive and Reclaim. That's, that is honestly their game plan. And they don't have any fallback. So as Dave the Brave's forces get closer, it's becoming riskier and riskier. But again, Dave the Brave, ugh, fortunately not a whole lot of shields to help support that felon. So that felon is just getting knocked out. Not able to do anything. The Ravagers wiping out thug after thug. The bandits trying to do what they can, but losing the thugs means losing shields. Losing the shields means the felon is even less effective. It goes down, and now the forces were forced to retreat. Dave the Brave, are they going to go into that Lotus Forest? They will regret it if they do. Are they aware of that, actually? And in the abstract, yes, they're aware that there was something of a Lotus Forest there at some point. Still, unfortunately, losing that economy earlier on, that is really wrecking Dave the Brave's chances. I mean, they were just getting their metal in there. They were just getting you know, the over or the reclaim and everything. Sorry, the reclaim, the blah, the assist build and everything. But yeah, losing the commander, taking out a bunch of metal as a result, and then also that reclaim all being in Masper's territory for both commanders, really. And this one's a little bit harder, but it's still basically in Masper's territory. Especially now with the Scorch is coming in for revenge. Felon, not the best target. Okay, that's where the Ravagers got to go take point. Still, Masper able to defend, letting Dave the Brave break themselves against them until finally just taking them out in response, and there we go. Ravagers coming in, that Felon is... That Felon is done. Yet another Felon going down for David the Brave, who's been way behind ever since that raid, and now are just limping along, trying desperately to get back in here, but it's not looking good. So with that, Masper takes out, well, I mean, this expansion, honestly, the expansion was just being built, but why not push the convicts away, prevent any rebuilding? Of course, this expansion is completely locked out. Fortunately for Masper, they're, or sorry, for Day of the Brave, they're aware of this. They had the radar to see it coming. So they're not, they're going to walk into that, but still, that's still got to hurt. Anyway, David the Brave, not really got a whole lot going for them. Masper going in for what looks like one final push. Got the Rippers in there as well. And... Masper, I'm honestly really impressed how well they were able to play with being so far back. The defender's advantage was not in their favor, but they have essentially just let David the Brave come at them. Had the units to defend. And then just counterattacked. I mean, that, that raid before, that was, you know trying to deal with the commander, dealing with all the bandits and everything before, going, uh, no, I don't want to deal with that, push, and moving on. So breaking through a hole in the defenses that, well, Masper, or that Day of the Brip hadn't really accounted for, and then from there, raiding everything. It's like it wasn't even really a counterattack, it was more just cutting your losses and going for an attack instead of trying to defend with them. But I guess, yeah, when you consider that Masper's defender's advantage wasn't that strong, maybe they figured, well... Go for the attack, don't try to wait. But still, David the Brave took so much territory into Masper's north side that honestly it wasn't that big of a deal. Anyway, there's the GG. There's the towel throw. And that is... That's Masper taking it. How much excess was there? Oh, not much. Basically, Commander died, lost the metal in storage, everything else was fine. Yeah, with both players. Well done, both of you. So Masper ultimately, yeah, as you can see, this is where the raid happened. You can tell, because everything gets slowed down. Or here, yeah, the metal income just drops and never recovers. Also doesn't help that Masper wasn't letting units die. That was eight Scorchers. And remember, a Scorcher, when they die, they leave like 40-ish metal for reclaim. So that would have been 500 metal at most, if all of them died. And Masper didn't let that happen. Or not, sorry, not what am I saying? 300 metal, if all of them died. So not a whole lot of metal to leave behind anyway. And not a whole lot was. 
yeah, that is that, was that game. So for the next and probably the last game for tonight, we're gonna have a match between Golda and India Ray. And it is going to And it's going to be on Otago. Unless India Ray who's in chat right now goes, no 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 no, that's a terrible game. Now it's your oh this doesn't normal, this is Jurassic Sands. It was boring? Oh. But I want to show Otago. I'm sick of the other maps. Like, I'm genuinely... I, I was trying to find maps that weren't really played in the tournament, because I was like, okay, I've seen a bunch of these maps. I want to see different maps. Kind of been a good match. No, I don't think I played recently. Mm. Great. Well, apparently that was a boring game. Uh. Well, I don't like the bigger maps too much. Otago being a partial exception, but, like, I don't like Comic Catcher at all. Oh, okay, well, apparently there was a game that was played that was decent between Masper and Fine on... On that's it called Cobalt Dream. All right, let's get that started then. So stay tuned. We'll be back with that in a few minutes. <laughs> 